everyone, my name is Nuria and this is my sewing journey. And for today's video we're going to attempt to make five different blouses. I released a video not a long time ago, or maybe it is a long time ago now, with how to create the basic top pattern. And what I want to do is just experiment a little bit and try different designs so I get the hang of it. I'm going to go from the easiest thing I can think of to the most difficult thing I can think of. And if everything goes according to plan, next week I'm going to release every day a video on how to draft and how to put together all the blouses that I'm going to create. So let's get into it. Oh, one last thing. I've been filming this video since April and my laptop broke, my hard drive broke, and I'm filming this again, so I don't have footage of me making the blouses, but just bear with me, okay? Because it's been a very long project and I want to show you guys, so let's go! Okay, so blouse number one, I want something really simple. We have a pattern with a lot of darts. We have to get rid of the darts because I want something flowy. How to do that is a very interesting question. So we have different type of dartless bodies. On one side we have the pattern that is used for stretch fabrics and it's a bit like that and it enters. And the other one we have the easy fitting block which is just a rectangle. I'm gonna go for that one because it's the easiest one. But what I don't want is for it to be too baggy. So I'm going to try and find a middle ground between the pattern that I have and the typical easy fitting block. Apart from that, I'm going to add a little bit of spices to the pattern because otherwise it's going to be very boring. So it's going to have an A-line and here on the back I'm going to add a little opening. All this inspiration comes from Pinterest where I spend most of my time and I absolutely love it. Dreaming about the next pattern that I can create. One last thing that I want to add is a lantern sleeve. I do not like personally lantern sleeves but because I want to create something that is new and that I've never seen before, then I'm going to try and add a lantern sleeve. And if I don't like it, I'll just remove it and no one will know. Okay, because I've filmed this before, the prototype for blouse number one has already been cut for blouse number two, so just, if you see it, just do like you didn't see it, okay? Because otherwise it's gonna be a spoiler, so I'm gonna show you the sleeves. Sleeve number one, lantern sleeve. Absolutely hate it. It's not for me. I'm sorry. Sleep number two is a normal sleep. I've decided that I'm gonna go in between and I'm gonna use just a sleep with volume. So everyone is happy. And then for the back, we have this opening here. Do you hear me? But what do we think? It's cute, no? I think it is. Okay, let me show you now the final product because it's not the final product. Okay, so this is it. Now you can get an idea of how the front is gonna look like and I made some nice things here. I would like to have more of an opening. Closed neckline to make me just, you know, like when you're like this all the time. I know I like, I like to show a little bit of skin. Okay, so for blouse number one, we created the whole structure and for blouse number two, what I want to create is an open neckline. I didn't wanna have a lot of problems with creating the perfect neckline, so what I did was create some gathers. Here you have prototype one, finally. I'll show you all the prototypes in a little bit. What I did was simply define how low I wanted my neckline. So, pattern number one is looking good. We like it. Prototype number two is with the gathers. I really like that at this point this fabric is perfect and I was ready to create the final design. But let me tell you, it was not. So let's get into prototype number three. Here we have prototype number three. As you can see, it was a perfect color for me, but I hated the construction. It was very complicated and I had to add a channel here to put the thread in between and that was very complicated. I erased everything I wanted to do and I decided to stick with a normal neckline. I would do a princess neckline and then I would add the gathers on the side. Let me introduce you to prototype number four. Last prototype before I changed all my decisions again. When making this blouse, I realized that I didn't know anything about necklines and I had to go back to my laptop and do some research. And that's when I discovered the magic of contouring and I made a video about it on how to create your perfect neckline. 
because this happened to me. As you can see, it looks nice if I want to hide it, but in reality, look at the folds. This back folds, and this also it doesn't sit the way I want it. So I decided to go back to construction number one and think better about the channel on how to put the thread in between and it worked. I'm going to show you at the end, but spoiler alert, I forgot again to pre-wash the fabric so it shrunk when I washed it later. So I made it again, again. Okay, I have to admit that I don't have a lot to say about blouse number three because it went very well after I discovered the magic of contouring, everything went how I wanted it to go, so that's good. So as I said, I had all the necklines figured out, so the challenge for this blouse was to create a V neckline, a little bit sexy and low, and apart from that, I wanted to create an opening and add buttons on the side and figure out all those things. So that's what I did, and I didn't even prototype it, or if I did prototype it, I lost it. But Again, you'll see it at the end. It's very nice and it's one of my favorites actually. I wear it all the time to work and <laughs> everywhere I wear it because it's very comfortable. By the way, I don't know if everyone has the same, but living in a house where someone sews is very dangerous. This was a needle on the floor. <laughs> and my boyfriend walks barefoot. <laughs> no human, animal, nothing has been harmed in the filming of this video. Maybe in a future one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, so blouse number four. With the blouses that I already made, we had some things figured out. We had the basic block, the open neckline, the opening of the blouse, and now finally we're going to move into a wrap top. So the only thing that we have to do is just extend the neckline on both sides. At this point, I was so angry at the blouses because I had been working on them for at least three months already and I took some breaks and then I started again so I decided I would not do any prototyping why? because I was sick of it and this is what happens and then I bought the fabric and I made it into the real fabric and of course I should have prototyped it so just don't be like me yeah, don't be like Noria oh you cannot see so it looks good, right? 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 No, because I forgot the contouring, I forgot it. So you can see here, you have this. That's because I didn't account for the bias because this is cutting the bias and then you have the V-neck opening. So you should have removed a bit of fabric here. The other thing is on the shoulders. So you can see that it opens there. I can fool you because you just put this very strong and nothing happened here and then you go like that but i decided to be a perfectionist and do it the right way because if i show it to you i want you guys to have the best of the best so i'm going to show you again blouse number four at the end of the video so for this blouse we went way way out of my comfort zone and we're gonna do something tied to the body now we have the basic bodies we know how to create a neckline, we know how to create gathers, we know how to create an opening. So what would happen if we put them all together and we separate the bust part from the bottom part of your torso? What would happen, I wonder? This is not the design that I would wear, but I've seen it a lot and I've seen a lot of people wearing it and I thought, you know what? Let's just get out of your comfort zone. Prototype number one, I didn't even finish it because I didn't like it. You can see here already, it's too tight, so I didn't like it. And I created it here and that's where I cut the fabric. Prototype number two, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Look at this. Flowy here, flowy there. Opening here. Cut there. Here I was trying to figure out how big I wanted my armholes to be and I ended up going for this one, but I have to say that I don't like it that much. I wish I would have gone for this one. And that's it, from here we moved into prototype number three, which I thought was gonna be the real deal, but it wasn't. <laughs> Let me show you. So prototype number three. What do we think? So out of my comfort zone. But yes, we're done, and now I can show you the final products, the final blouses, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into it. Welcome to the conclusion of this video. Now I'm gonna show you all the blouses. So for blouse number one, you already saw this first version where the neckline 
was like this in the front and then on the back it had the opening. But then I was trying it on and I turned it around and I put the opening on the front and I absolutely loved it. Like I, I was obsessed with it. And because this is my favorite blouse or one of them because I love them all, I created a second version. So one in white and one in blue. I tried doing some embroidery but it didn't look that good. And I really like the finishes on this one because the fabric was already finishing like that. This one I had to create it from scratch. The only difference is that the blue one has more volume on the sleeves and that this one has a normal sleeve. Blouse number two. I made exactly the same mistake as blouse number one. I didn't pre-wash the fabric so then this one is smaller. I made it with long sleeve because I wanted to see how it would be and also because it was cold back then in April. I made this one and then I made a short sleeves version and I also added some volume on the sleeves and one is made with muslin and the other one is made with cotton. The cotton one feels a little bit like I'm going to a communion or a baptism or something like that so I wouldn't wear it on a daily basis but I do like it on me. I played around a little bit on how big the colors were and on the blue one they are one centimeter and on this one they are two centimeters. I think I would go for one centimeter if I did it again but that's mostly it for blouse number two. Blouse number three I played around with two options. I made one in kind of a viscose fabric and then another one with a cotton, I think it's poplin. I don't know if that's how it's called in English. And I think you can see the difference the buttons. So the white one, I'm not finished yet because I finished the main structure yesterday but I'm adding some embroidery here on the side so you'll have to follow me on Instagram too to see the final product, sorry. <laughs> you can see the buttons here are normal buttons and the facing is one over the other one. And on the other hand, this one, you cannot see it but it's not one over the other one, you know, you can see skin here. It's using one of these buttons. Then I created these loops to just put them to the other side. Those are my two options. I have to say that the viscose one feels nicer to my body because I'm not used to wearing tight clothes and this one feels a little bit tighter, you know, because I have a huge back and whenever I move around, it's, I don't know, it feels tight. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to feel because I never wear shirts so let me know in the comments because i have no idea to be honest for blouse number four i already showed you the wearable toilet which is made with linen and the finishes are not so good i just overlocked and folded the seam inwards once and then you have the other one that i created i feel a little bit like i went to india and i bought a t-shirt or something that's how i feel right it's very pretty i finished it yesterday i wore it today to work it is very nice it's actually very, very fresh. I feel a little bit uncomfortable wearing a wrap top because I feel like it's gonna fall anytime, but it didn't fall, it was perfect. And then the finishes here are way better. See, I use bias tape and I don't know, no complaints. This one is perfect fit. Once I improved the fitting and I accounted for the darts and for the necklines and for the shoulders, I had absolutely no problem. Yes. And finally moving into blouse number five. So for this blouse I made two options. One with an opening that is with thread and then another one that is with buttons. This one I made it to wear at work but I have to say I did not finish it yet because I just feel so uncomfortable wearing and so insecure and I don't like it. I'm sorry I don't like it. The white one is the one that I've seen most people wear and it's kind of a beach look. It's what all the people say uh, if I went to a Europe trip I would wear this and then you never see anyone in Europe wearing anything like this at least where I live but yeah dreaming is very nice and I would wear it to go into a I don't know Italy trip <sighs> the only thing is the opening for the armholes is a bit too big and I think I show a bit too much of the side boob but apart from that it's a really nice fit to be honest and for the office version, the only problem that I have with this one is that I made it with a very light cotton and cotton, even if it's light, is very sturdy. And what happens here with the volume is that it creates a weird shape. As you can see, I didn't finish it because I want to finish it by hand, of course. And then you have the buttons here instead of the opening that you have in the other one. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know which one is your favorite. I would say, my favorite order would be blouse number one, blouse number three, blouse number four, blouse number two, and blouse number five. 
that's my order. So yeah, let me know which one is your favorite and which one is your least favorite. And if you want to learn how to make them, next week will be your chance. Hopefully, hopefully, because this project has been the longest project of my life and <laughs> I can't wait to be finished. If you got till the end, thank you so much for following me. If you want to see more regular content, I post on Instagram and my name on Instagram is underscore Nuriamo. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.